Hey, I'm Couch Goop, and we're going to be looking at the Forspoken demo. 30 gig dropped about two or three days ago, coincided it with the Game Awards, and I am and aren't impressed with this. Front end of the video, we're on quality mode. I flipped it out to ray tracing just to double check if there's any dramatic difference. Not really anything huge to write home about at this stage, but remember, it's in early build, you get plastered warnings of that everywhere, and games like this would always crisp up and get slightly better in engine on launch anyway, but not unimpressive stuff. I am impressed with what they've given us on the demo, like a quite big map, loads of areas to explore, crafting's even in there, you've even got a save option, and more importantly you've got a fully functional photo mode off the bat, which I reveled in to be fair, and it was actually very good. I did find that some stutter and areas when you start pausing during combat, because this is one very particle heavy game. Notice I've got ray tracing off and quality off, so that water, that's bog standard performance mode water, not hideous at all, but what does worry me is this doesn't feel like a PlayStation 5 game at all. I mean, Elden Ring on the PlayStation 4 Pro looks just as good as this scenically. We haven't got to the combat yet, and that's where this game is kind of excelling. Its deal is that you've got about 19 different weapon modes, all accessed through a wheel on your R and L buttons. It's hella confusing. You need to look at the tutorial to work out what's best for what situation, but it's all about switching out during that fast-paced combat. This looks like a big one. This game comes out on the 24th of January and it doesn't just come out on the PlayStation 5, shocker. It actually comes out on Windows as well. So Ghostwire was a similar setup with that. Square Enix are in there as well and you do get a little bit of near Automata vibe with it with crazy OP wildlife having a massive go at you. I really regret even starting on these reindeer. I want to try and avoid getting hit for a little while. You've kind of got three major chunks to that weapon system. One being shield, one being projectile, and one being like an area effect, very short range mode. And then you can splice those with mixing them with the second wheel, which is on the other R button, giving you like combinations of various moves. It does remind me a little bit of prototype. With that sort of use of organic feeling structures, either coming out the ground and tentacles, all manner of crazy sparkly particles are going up in the air in front of your face during this demo that you are at times quite gobsmacked by it all. It's got a sleep system in it which replenishes your health and God only knows what else. And also you can look into upgrading or even different cosmetic clothes options with these crafting materials that you find in line around. I'm not too sure how much of that you can get into on this demo, but it's well cool to see what you could have won. And it's nice to get introduced to the fast travel system, how the rest system works, and your sort of base level upgrades. You get a good look at all of that area. Talking of good looks and those particles, let's just see what's going on here. This is like random from the ashes style roots that come up from the ground. Look at the light going around separate blades of grass here. And this is just one screen grab of a dramatic looking fight in its own right without pausing and going around and seeing what's happening when everything's stationary. You can see a shed ton of light resists, vulnerable, numbers flying around everywhere. Certain enemies are blatantly open and weaker to certain different attacks. You need to work out which method you're gonna go. Is it gonna be defense? Are you gonna go full aggressive? You can switch that stance up right in the middle of combat, which I really like. It's a platinum vibe there with that. That feels very cool and looks very cool. And they've obviously put a lot of thought into it. Two, three, four. Why? I sometimes wonder what you think I'm here for, you know. I'm full on into Ragnarok at the moment, so imagine the job this game's got to do to impress me on a visual level. And one thing I will say, I double checked that it isn't actually coming out on any other Sony systems other than the PlayStation 5. No mention of it, so this is definitely a true current gen game and I am just not feeling that at the moment, but it is a demo. And I think this game's strengths are gonna be in its meta, in its unlocks and its crafting and its different appearances and weapon type and mixing all of that variety up. I don't think it's supposed to be an open world stunner at this stage. It's from a company called Luminous Productions and they have their own engine which they've actually used on Final Fantasy games and you can straight up see that in some of those particle effects and all that dazzly 
blue light it is quite similar and it's welcome because I like that engine it's different from what else is out there and it will certainly give this game a sort of sheen of quality I feel that will put it quite far from a lot of other bog standard open world games that are out and about at the moment. Yep. What I'm definitely not seeing is any sort of DRM micro pay to win get higher up rank any shops nothing in that direction that looks like real money is involved at any stage at all this could be a very true offline single player game and if it is i'm very up for that i don't want to see another babylon's fall which is that game from platinum that kind of looked like it attempted this sort of open world aspect but just went full-on online only it was anthem but worse can you believe that oh, yeah what he said these crocodiles were freaking awesome and I sort of fell into a routine of using that shield power against that rain. You get surrounded then it's time to pull up the ground and start using that root area effect. It does all kind of flow and when the penny drops about what you need to use and when you need to use it, it feels very empowering. You can also go in for a kill shot. I love fighting crocodiles at the best of times but in a sort of fancy magical world like this it just seems slightly more badass. Is this game worth the hype? Yes, to a certain extent. You have to understand, I think what we're looking at is what we're gonna get, literally. It's gonna be just this, but bigger and with more options. I did get myself proper confused because you've got Bleak Faith, which I put a video out, which is just disappeared, that looks loads better than this, bit Dark Soulsy and Assassin's creed -y, but in this vein. And I thought this game was called Forsaken and not Forspoken for ages. It might have even changed its name halfway through development. Don't quote me on that. Now, what is out there? that's like this, that you can play now, that's available on the PlayStation 5, which might actually turn out to be a better game full stop. Yes, you've guessed it. Kenna Bridge of Spirits. An absolutely criminally underrated third-person fantasy action RPG built in its own beautiful world. This thing is a stunner. Love it to bits, and it's available on all the platforms as well, but it does handle particularly well on the PlayStation 5 with performance and 4K modes. Will I get Forsaken or Forspoken when it releases next year? Eventually, I imagine, because that sort of game totally appeals to me. But I want to get through Kenner first. I think if you haven't looked at that, you've got enough time to get it under your belt before Forspoken is released. So I have been Couch Game, and I will see you all down there. <laughs> <laughs>